the very smallest building on Chestnut Street. It was built well before Chestnut Street was laid out, so you will notice it isn't exactly parallel to the street. Now, the smallest building is blue building coming up on our left-hand side, right there. And for four years, Nathaniel Hawthorne, the famous writer, and his family lived in that very building. And when Mrs. Hawthorne threw wild tea parties, Nathaniel would duck out the rear fourth go there, go across to the private library I showed you earlier, where he would smoke his pipe and read books. And when the party was over, one of his three daughters would go across from this building Pumpkins. to the library, tap him on the shoulder, bring him back home. He was a wonderful writer, a little dark for me, but an incredible shy man. Ironically, next to the smallest building, this building to the left here, is the largest. Greek revivalist in style. Door columns in the front door. And guess what? Only two people live in this huge building all alone. I suspect a lot of texting goes on now. <laughs> and I've been told by two different sources that there used to be a swimming pool in the basement of that building. Now coming up on the right, the first brick building we come to, the year was 1800. A group of business people got together. They asked Samuel McIntyre if he could come up with a function hall. He came up with this brick building to our right here. He finished it in 1805. They named it after Alexandra Hamilton, who a year earlier had been shot in a duel in New Jersey. Sorry, guys. <laughs> if you come back here, they used to have public offices down on the ground floor, but if you come back here, due to the second floor, there, they have what's called a suspended ballroom floor. This means that when you step on it, or better yet, dance on it, the floor flexes underneath your feet. Now, I used to belong to the Royal Country Scottish Dance Group here in Salem. Now, I'm not Scottish, wrecked my knees, but we had our Christmas party up on that floor. I've tried out that floor personally, and I can tell you, it is an amazing effect, especially if you're sober. Now, on the next right turn we may make, if you look to the left, we'll be approaching the witch house. I've already told you it was started in the 1640s. No witches lived in the witch house. 1675, still not finished. A Jonathan Corwin, a very rich merchant, bought this witch house. Because he was so wealthy, he finished off the house, furnished it, moved into it. When he did, within a year, he became a judge. When he became a judge, he started interrogating ordinary citizens like you and me to see if you were a witch. Now, what I'm about to tell you is, yes, here in Salem, back in 1692, there used to be some witches. There's still witches here in Salem today. A certain meter mode comes to mind. However, if you remember me telling you about George Corwin, this fellow's name was Jonathan Corwin. He was the uncle to George Corwin, the sheriff. The two of them would go throughout Salem looking at property. If they liked a piece of property, they would invite them into the witch house. Invite. If they accepted that, and they went into that house, once they were in there, the two of them and more would torture, make false statements, anything, to pressure that poor person to admit that they were a witch, even if they weren't. And why? Because if they did that, the two of them gained the property, money, everything. It was worse than the density theft today. And at least the many of them lost their lives. And that was the way they operated back in 1682. Now I'm about to make a sharp left turn here in our 
kind, courteous, Massachusetts drivers permit us to, which means we may have to send out for supper. Notice. When we make the turn, if you look through the windshield, you'll notice a mustard-colored fence. Where you see this fence when we make the turn, you have to imagine that that prior to 1840, there were ships tied up, unloading their cargo into the warehouse to the left there. And this trolley, because it makes its nearest approach to the fence, right now, once again, would have been underneath, this time, the North River. Now, as we go through the underpass here, look to the left, you see where today's North River flows into Salem Harbor. Right to the left here. And also to the left is Salem train station. The train will take you to Boston in 33, 23 minutes. And the schedule of the sailors to and from Boston is incredibly frequent right here to our left. Yeah. It is because of uh, the pandemic. This last weekend was the first time they started closing the station here. But if you have a car, um, you go to Beverly or the next station up. No car. Now I'd like to make a left turn when we do we're going to see this the tour is actually really cool and really informative. True it says there are no seafoods on it. I'm not trying to advertise a very top rated seafood restaurant here in Salem. But this building right there coming into view is actually down here in Salem as the Lyceum building. And it is in this Lyceum building that most of your American literary giants People like Daniel Webster, Emerson, Thoreau gave three talks up on the second floor. However, another name is known for that second floor, and that is Bridget Bishop. Bridget Bishop, she owned a cottage and orchard in the parking lot here to the left back in the 1600s. She was born in London, England, and at the age of 60, she was the first person to be hanged in Salem as a witch. I've been told on the second floor of that Lyceum building we just went by, she haunts it frequently. And to tell you the truth, she is one spirit I didn't think I would mind meeting, because she was kind of a classy lady for her time. Now here is the tragedy. 1600s, she owned orchards and a cottage over there. No London airport, no highways. She went back to London, England to visit family and friends, only to return here to Salem and ended up getting married. Now, at the end of the street, here's the left. Large. A lot of people point to the statue and they utter the word witch. Actually, it's not even a female. It is Roger Coleman, our very first governor, who governed here in Salem from 1626 to 1628. Right there. And take a look at this mansion to the right here with all the windows. This building started out as a four-room cottage. It was owned by a sea captain who traded furs from New England to North Russia. One day, he went through the front door of his four-room cottage right there, kissed his wife goodbye. She casually asked him if he would mind if she made some renovations while he was away. When he returned a year and a half later, those were the renovations she had made. Now, I should be honest with you, it was her money, but I think the good captain took her on every subsequent voyage. Now, we're back here at our number one stop. Make sure you have everything with you. We hope you have a pleasant stay here in Salem.
and even more important.